In this video, we're going to be looking at quadratic functions and we're going to find the vertex and axis of symmetry. So first off, the standard form of a quadratic function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So a, b, and c, those are numbers. So a is the number that's multiplied by x squared, b is multiplied by x, and c is a constant, the number that's by itself without a variable. And a cannot equal zero, meaning the number in front of x squared can't be zero, because zero times x squared is zero, and that would mean, well, you don't have an x squared term. So that's the one rule, a cannot be zero. So this is the parent function of a quadratic function. It's a parent function because it's the most basic type of quadratic function, y equals x squared. So in this case, both b and c would be zero because nothing's added on, and a would be one because truly there's one x squared there. So the parent function, most basic type of function, it's going to be this U shape. You notice it's not a V, it's a U. And the shape, it's called a parabola. So anytime you graph a quadratic function, you're going to graph it as a parabola. You're gonna make sure it's kind of U shaped at the bottom, not a perfect V, that's a different type of function. All right, so the vertex is either high, the highest or the lowest point of the parabola. So this is where the parabola bends. So this would be the vertex. So it's at the bottom down here. If it was the other direction, it would be at the top. So right now it's the lowest point because it's the bottom of the parabola. And these arrows just means the graph will continue going up and out forever. All right, to find the vertex, you're going to write the quadratic function in standard form. So if it's not in this form, rewrite it. Identify the values of A, B, and C. And then you're going to identify the x coordinate of the vertex. So remember the vertex, it's a coordinate pair, it's an actual point. So to find the x coordinate, you're going to do negative the b value over two times the a value. And this will give you the x coordinate. Then you're going to substitute the value of x from step three into the quadra quadratic function 4x and solve for the y coordinate. So once you found this, you're going to substitute that x value in here for your x, and then you're just gonna solve and that'll give you what y is equal to. So your vertex is a point, x comma y. Axis of symmetry, it divides the parabola into two symmetric parts through the vertex. So if we look back up here at this one, the axis of symmetry, it's a vertical line, straight down through the vertex. So my vertex is this point right here. It goes straight down through it. See how it's symmetric. The two halves, if I folded it over, it'd fold right on top of itself. To find the axis of symmetry, it's just the vertical line, x equals negative b over 2a. You notice it's the same thing as the x coordinate of the vertex because, well, it goes through the vertex. So this is a point for the vertex, whereas the axis of symmetry is an actual line. So they are slightly different, but you use the same formula to find them. All right, so we're gonna go through and do a few problems. So the first one, we're just gonna identify the vertex and axis of symmetry for each quadratic function. So first I'm gonna find the values of a, b, and c. So here, a is two, remember it's multiplied by x squared. b is negative eight multiply by x, and c is a constant, it's negative 15. Don't forget, if there's a minus in front of it, it has to come with it as a negative. So to find the vertex, I'm gonna start by finding the x coordinate, and that's going to be negative the b value, which the b value is negative eight, over two times the a value, which my a value is two. So I'm just going to reduce this. A negative times a negative is a positive, so we just are left with eight over two times two is four, and well, eight over four is equal to two. So that means the x coordinate of my vertex is two, but the axis of symmetry also uses this. So I know 
that my axis of symmetry will go will be a vertical line where x is equal to 2. So you can do both of these at the same time. Remember, this is a point. This is the vertical line through that x-coordinate. Now we have to find the y-coordinate. All right, I have to plug what x is equal to, in this case 2, back into my equation for x, solve for y. So I have y is equal to 2 times, I'm going to put this in parentheses, my x value is 2 squared minus 8 times 2 minus 15. All right, here's where it's tricky. You're multiplying and you have an exponent. Order of operation tells you half tells you you have to do exponents first. So you have to do 2 to the power of 2 and then multiply that answer times 2. So I have y equals 2 times 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Remember it tells you multiply the base by itself twice, so 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 8 times 2 is 16, minus 15. We're going to simplify. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 16, minus 15. I'm going to rewrite this over here. It gives me y is equal to negative 23. All right, so that's my y coordinate right here. So my vertex of my parabola goes through this point, and the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. All right, let's try one more together. All right, x squared, well, there's really one x squared there, so I know my a value is 1. But here's what's tricky. I don't have a plus x value. So this is the same thing as saying my 1x squared, y equals 1x squared, plus 0x plus 9. If, we, if you're missing a value, such as your x value, that means the number in front of it, the coefficient, is 0. So b is 0. All right, sorry, this was supposed to be a minus 9. I put a plus. Okay, c is negative 9. So my vertex, the x value, is equal to negative my b value, which is 0, over 2 times my a value, which is 1. And I don't have to go any further because, well, there's not a negative 0, it's just 0. And 0 divided by anything is always going to be 0. So I know my x value is 0. I also know the axis of symmetry is the vertical line through x equals 0. All right, now I have to find the y coordinate up here. I have y equals, I'm just going to use the original problem, x squared, which x is 0, 0 squared minus 9. 0 squared is just 0, so I'm left with negative 9. So the vertex is 0 comma negative 9. All right, I'm going to give you two problems to go ahead and do, and when you're done, I will go through them with you. All right, number one, we have negative one for A, six for B, and 15 for C. So the vertex is X equals B, which is negative B, which is six, over two times A, which is negative one. So I have negative six over two times negative one is negative two, and negative six over negative two is positive three. So my X coordinate is three, my axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals 3. The y coordinate, I'm going to plug 3 in for x. So we have negative our x value, which is 3, which is squared, plus 6 times the x value, which is 3, plus 15. Okay, so this negative stays on the outside. It's just the 3 that's going to be squared. I have negative 3 squared is 9 plus 6 times 3 is 18, plus 15. So that gives me that y is equal to 24. So my y coordinate is 24 for this one. Hopefully you got that. And the last one, a is 5, b is negative 20, and c is negative 4. So the x coordinate for my vertex, negative b, which is negative 20, over 2 times a, which is 5, 
Negative times a negative is a positive, so we have positive 20 over 2 times 5 is 10, which is 2. So the x coordinate is 2. My axis of symmetry is a vertical line through x equals 2. I always do that first. All right, now the y coordinate. Plug in 2 for x. We have 5 times 2 squared minus 20 times 2 minus 4. All right, exponents first. 5 times 2 squared is 4, minus 20 times 2 is 40, minus 4. 5 times 4 gives me 20, minus 40, minus 4, which reduces to negative 24. So the y coordinate is negative 24. Hopefully you were able to get those.